Hello all, welcome to the video lecture. This is Ramesh Lama. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the sharpening filter. For the students who have taken my class in last semester, uh, the title Advanced Intelligence System may find the lecture contains same as the previous one. Uh, as you can see from the course levels until the age detection, you will find almost the same content as this basic information as these basic image processing techniques are foundation of computer vision so i have included these stuffs in this uh, in this semester as well okay let's get back to our class we discussed about the special filters in our last class where we saw different where we saw uh, different smoothing filters in this video, we will be discussing about the sharpening filter and the edge detection. While talking about the sharpening filters, the fundamental goal of sharpening filter is to highlight the transition in image intensi uh, intensity of images. As we discussed in our previous class, smoothing in spatial domain is achieved by pixel averaging or smoothing in, in certain neighborhood which is analogous to the integration. So it is logical to say that sharpening can be accomplished by the special differentiation. So we will, be, we will define and implement various ways of operators for sharpening by digital differentiation. And the strength of the response of derivative operator or the differentiation is proportional to the degree of intensity discontinuity of the image at the point at which operator is applied thus the differentiation enhances the edges and other discontinuities such as noises and de-emphasizes the smooth area or the closely or the slowly varying area so softening is often referred to as a high pass filter in similar manner we disreferred smoothing filter as low pass filter which was borrowed from the frequency domain as we define um, image in terms of digital function the derivative of digital function are defined in terms of the differences and the basic definis definition of the first order derivative of any function uh, fx is the difference which here we have got the function fx and we take the derivative as diff, uh, df by dx is equal to fx plus 1 minus fx or the difference between the two neighboring pixels here fx and uh, its next pixel fx uh, fx plus 1 is its next pixel or its succeeding pixel and we call this as a forward uh, difference because uh, it takes the difference of current pixel and the next pixel or the succeeding pixel but we can take um, the backward difference as well where we have a cu current pixel fx and we take the difference between the current pixel and the previous one or, or the preceding one and uh, as i as i said before the forward difference is the difference between the current pixel and the succeeding or next pixel and there is also another type of uh, difference which we call the central difference here we take the difference between the pre uh, previous and the next one excluding the current pixel so we have different derivative marks for this as well we can do by masking uh, by taking the diff by taking the by, with the help of mask here we have got the backward difference it consists of minus one and one for the forward difference it will have one and minus one in case of central difference it will have minus one zero and one so this can be implemented with the derivative marks as well so as we have discussed before the first derivative is the difference between the two neighboring pixels but this difference also must satisfy some condition which is as follows like as we take the derivative uh, or the as we take difference between the pixels so if the uh, area if the 
if it is taking if we are taking the derivative around the constantly varying area or uh, it must be zero in areas of constant intensity or uh, like uh, here the pixel intensities will be almost same so if we take the difference between two same valued intensity then definitely the uh, the value will be zero and it must be non-zero at the onset of intensity step or ramp we will see in further like where the uh, where the intensity varies abruptly or slowly in case of ramp the intensity varies slowly and uh, in case of step the intensity abruptly changes so in such areas the um, in at the at the onset of this uh, intensity profile it must be non-zero and it must be non-zero along the ramp in case of ramp where the intensity varies slowly and it must be non-zero and the second derivative is its derivative of derivative so if we take the derivative of derivative derivative it will be represented by this d square f divided by dx square which which, uh, which consists of three pixels like uh, with the current pixel and the previous and next pixel and it also must have some uh, it must have some uh, it must also uh, uh, it must follow some rule or and in this case also we can see that it must be zero at the constant area and must be non-zero uh, it must be non-zero at the onset and end of the intensity ramp uh, intensity step and ramp and it must be zero along the constant slope so we will see in more detail with this example now we will see whether the conditions mentioned above for first derivative and second derivative are met or not by two definitions uh, as we have seen the definition of first derivative and second derivative here is the figure which is a simple image we have got the simple image here and we will take the 1d horizontal gray level profile along the center of the image here we can see we take we just take the uh, uh, intensity profile along this line which includes this isolated noise point as well and we can see here that the horizontal gray level scan line it is this horizontal gray level scan line and it consists of three sections like we can see it consists of uh, the isolated uh, constant area and ramp and step so um, we will see in more detail here like in this figure this figure shows some details of this intensity profile suppose we have this intensity profile and hmm, here what we see is it consists of the uh, like uh, it consists of here we see that the, it consists of the circle this circle indicates the onset or the end of the intensity transitions we can see this circle here either it consists of onset or the end of this uh, intensity transitions and another thing is here is the it will have intensity values and this intensity values are indicated by are denoted by the small squares now let us see here it has the scan line this scan line consists of the intensity values along these points and here we can see the first and second derivative of this intensity lines or in uh, yeah, of this scan line and here we will see as we discussed before to compute the first or derivative we take the difference of the current pixel uh, with either the preceding or the succeeding pixels in case of the uh, first derivative we take the difference between the um, between two pixels it may it may include the preceding or the succeeding one 
and in case of second derivative we will just take the derivative of the first derivative or difference of the first derivative and if we use the uh, if we derive from the pixel values then it will include the current pixel previous and next one so let us see let's observe here uh, how it looks like now we traverse the profile from the left to right like we can we will traverse from left to right here we encounter the smooth area with the uh, constant intensity and then uh, we will and if we take the derivative over here here in case of constant intensity the uh, first derivative and second derivatives are zero in here in constant intensity profile and next we encounter the intensity ramp here we can see the ramp here the first order derivative is non-zero at the onset of the ramp now if we look at this point at the onset of this ramp we will see the second derivative to be non-zero and it is non-zero in case of onset of the step as well here also we will see it will be the second derivative is uh, non-zero at the uh, it is non-zero at the onset of the step as well similarly the second derivative is non-zero at the onset of end of both ramp and the uh, step we can see here we will see the second derivative here the second derivative is non-zero at the onset of ramp and step and it is the it is non-zero at the end end of end of ramp and the step so we can see here and here what we see is the property 2 is satisfied by the, for the both derivatives we have seen here in case of property 2 it must be non-zero for second derivative it must be non-zero at the onset and end of the intensity ramp and it must be non-zero at the onset of intensity uh, ramp for the first derivative so this property uh, is satisfied here and finally for the property 3 uh, that the first derivative the first derivative is non-zero at the ramp we can see here in case of along the ramp along the ramp the first derivative is non-zero we can see here along the ramp it's non-zero and second is zero along the ramp we can see when we see the when we take the derivative of first derivative which is second derivative it is zero along the ramp so we can so we can we just saw we just observe here that the first uh, first order derivative is generally produced the thicker edges in an image and the second order derivative give the stronger response to the file details such as thin lines and isolated points and the first order derivative have a strong response to the gray level step and the second order derivative produces the double response at the step edge and second order derivative are better suited for the edge enhancement we can see that uh, what we saw here is the first order derivative has a strong response to the gray level step here in case of gray level step we can see here that the first order derivative is it has the strong response here at this gray uh, step we can see here this 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 point this is the first derivative and it has a higher intensity at the gray step and another second order derivative produces a double response at the step edges we can see here that the second order derivative is here in case of step in case of step it gives us the double response means is it gives us the positive as well as the two peaks as well as the negative so uh, the second order derivative are better suited for the image enhancement and the edge detection usually we can say because we get the two response here and uh, so second order derivative is mostly useful in case of edge detection 
and the point here we can see uh, the second order derivative is better suited for the uh, and we can see here the zero zero cross this zero cross is the line that intersects the uh, it is the line that this is the line joining two peaks and that intersects this uh, horizontal intensity uh, line and this point is called the zero crossing because it goes through the zeros zero intensity value and while connecting two peaks of the second derivative then this is called the zero crossing and this is very important in case of uh, edge detection and it is this zero, zero crossing is widely used in case of uh, edge detection okay this is what we observed so we will uh, mainly discuss about the second order de derivative for the image enhancement because we have seen that it gives uh, the second order derivative is quite it gives us the double intensity um, double uh, peaks two peaks while detecting the edge and but to use for the image enhancement of radar uh, as our images are digital so we need to uh, we need the discrete formulation of this second order derivative and the filter design should be isotropic as which means that the response of the filter should be independent of the orientation uh, of the discontinuity in the image and must be widely and the most widely uh, used second order derivative operator of the isotropic nature is the Laplace operator so we'll discuss about the Laplace operator as we know the Laplace operator is given by this is the lab uh, this is the simplest uh, we we know this this Laplace operator and which is the uh, second order derivative in x direction is this is the uh, second order derivative and uh, we can uh, we can express this in discrete form in along the x direction this consists of d square f of dx square which is fx plus 1y uh, and fx minus 1y minus 2fx it's along the x direction and in y direction it will uh, walk along the uh, the x will be kept constant and it will just uh, vary along the it will consider the pixels along the y directions and uh, it follows from the uh, preceding three like when we uh, when we just uh, use these three equations we will get this expression this is the Laplacian of two variables and it consists of uh, we will get this we will get this um, mask and uh, this 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 equation can be implemented with these marks and if we uh, extend to uh, of this equation including the di diagonal neighbors then we will get of this form with the uh, if we include the diagonal uh, pixels then we will get uh, this mask and if we want to change the uh, center pixel value uh, if we want to change the uh, sign of the uh, center pixel then we will get this uh, of this first mask and the with the changed sign we will get the uh, of the second mask we will get this uh, mask and as we saw before as we saw that Laplacian is derivative operator so it highlights the sharp intensity transition in an image and it de-emphasizes the region of slowly varying intensity and uh, this will tend to produce images that have the grace edge lines and other discontinuities are uh, all superimposed on the dark and the background features can be recovered while still preserving the uh, sharpening effect of the Laplacian by adding the Laplacian to the original image. So what we do here is we take the um, in order to sharpen the image what we do is we add 
the Laplace chain to the original image and here we can see if the, uh, this is obtained by this expression and if the central coefficient of the Laplacian mask is negative then we will have uh, fx minus uh, Laplacian of this fxy and if the central coefficient of the Laplacian mask is positive then we will add the uh, we will add with this fxy and here is the result here we can see that we have got the blurred image here on the left side top left we see the blurred image and we take the Laplacian of image is the second now if uh, if I add this Laplacian with this image then I will get the siphon image this is the siphon image but the sharpness also varies based on the filter marks that we use and this one is with the filter marks that given by this one with the without considering the uh, neighboring or diagonal pixels uh, when the marks that excludes the diagonal pixels then we get this sharpened image and when the diagonal pixels are included then we get this pixel or we get this uh, sharpened image so we can see like it may not be that much clearly visible but if we look the close up then in case of the uh, sharpened image that includes the diagonal elements the image is sharpened it's more sharpened than the without the uh, without including the diagonal pixels so another way of uh, getting the sharpened image is the unsharp masking and high boost filtering this is a process commonly used by printing and publishing industry and it's called the unsharp masking cons and it consists of the following steps first what we do is we blur the original image and we subtract the blurred image from the original and the resulting difference is called the mask and and then the resulting mask is added to the original uh, this is uh, the mathematical formulation like first we subtract suppose we have image fx fxy then what we do is we blur this uh, image with with uh, gaussian or with some low pass filter and with the smoothing filter and here we get the f dash x y f and this is given uh, and what we do is this is g max and we will add and here we have k a constant k in this case for for normal uh, unsharp masking we will set k as one but for in case of high boost filtering what we do is we set k to be greater than one and if we choose k less than one then it will de-emphasize this contribution of unsharp mask so here is the uh, mechanics of unsharp mask we have the original image and we will blur the original image with the here it is blurred with some gaussian filter blurred signal with the original dash uh, for reference and we unsharp the mask we take the difference and we add the sharpened signal obtained by the adding c to a this c and it is added to the a then we get this we unsharp mask added to the original one then we get the sharpened signal let us see this example here we have the original image this di the first one is the original image then second one is the gaussian filter on sharp mask and then we have got the result of unsharp masking it is just the unsharp mask with by setting k is equal to one and when the k is greater than one and we get this fix this image which is which looks more sharpened than the uh, just this using unsharp mask this means that high boost filtering gives us the greater sharpened image than the unsharp mask and if we look the difference between the original and uh, this uh, this uh, high boost may uh, it looks like uh, the high boost filtering gives more sharp image than the original one so it's all about the high pass 
it's all about the sharpening of filter and next we will be discussing about the edge detection